This video will cover tool marks, how they are compared and what class and individual characteristics are. There are four classifications of tool marks. The first classifies impressed marks, such as when a screwdriver is used as a lever to force a door or a window. The second is striated tool marks, such as a screwdriver scraped along a car door. The third is crushed tool marks, such as pliers cutting wires. And the final category is for multi-stroke tool marks, such as a saw being used to cut wood. The types of crimes where tool marks can be found include burglaries and car theft. Marks are also created when a firearm is fired due to the action of the firing mechanism. These can be found on the cartridge or projectile involved. At the crime scene, we must record the tool mark. A tool mark can be cast using a silicone casting material called copyright. This is capable of recording very fine details, is easy and safe to use, sets quickly and forms a stable and robust object. Apart from shotguns, which have a smooth barrel, firearms have rifled barrels. This is a set of spiral grooves that run from the chamber to the muzzle in order to grip the projectile and cause it to spin. This increases the range and accuracy of the projectile. These rifling marks are classified as impressed tool marks. These rifling marks can indicate a particular type or brand of firearm, but not that a specific firearm was used to fire the projectile. Within these grooves, scratches are formed during the firing action. These scratches are referred to as striations, so are a form of striated tool marks. These striations can also be present on the spent cartridge cases from the interactions between the firing pin and the primer cup and from the breech face. If the firearm is an automatic, marks can also be caused on the base of the cartridge by the ejector and on the rim by the extractor. Other marks on the cartridge case wall can also result from chambering, discharge or extraction. If a tool is recovered during an examination of a crime scene, control tool marks must be made so that they can be compared to the crime scene tool mark cast in copyright. Control tool marks are made by the forensic scientist using the tool and a sheet of lead. Lead is used as it is a soft metal so the tool will leave an impression in it. The aim is to make representative marks from the tool to establish if it can replicate the appearance of the crime scene tool mark. If so, the control mark will be cast in copyright. This is so that when making comparisons, the scientist is comparing like with like. That is, the crime scene copyright tool mark cast is compared with the control copyright tool mark cast. In a firearm case, projectiles and cartridge cases can be recovered from the crime scene. In order to make a comparison, the scientist would compare like with like. This is achieved by test firing the recovered weapon using similar cartridges. The video provided shows how this is achieved by firing the projectile into a tank of water. The water slows down the speed of the projectile without damaging it, whereas a hard surface could potentially damage the projectile. The test fired projectile would then be compared with the crime scene projectile and the cartridge cases would also be compared. Regardless of whether you are examining copyright casts, projectiles or cartridge cases, the examinations would be undertaken using a comparison macroscope. The image provided shows a comparison macroscope. You can see in the image that the macroscope has two stages. This is so the crime scene tool mark can be placed on one stage and the control tool mark can be placed on the other stage and examined simultaneously. Each tool mark can be independently manipulated in order to see if there are any points of agreement or complete disagreement between the tool marks.
In the examination process, the scientist is comparing class and individual characteristics. Class characteristics derive from the manufacture of the tool, firearm or cartridge. These relate to the design and quality control levels of the manufacturer. The size of the projectile in a cartridge would also be consistent in ammunition production and a gun manufacturer would want to ensure that the diameter of the barrel was also consistent in every gun of that type that they produce. Individual characteristics, on the other hand, are specific to a particular tool. These are produced by damage in the use of the tool, such as wear on the jaws of pliers, when the ejector removes a spent cartridge case, or when the projectile is passing through the barrel of the firearm. As such, these tool marks are created accidentally through use. Therefore, they can be used to show that a particular tool produced a particular tool mark or a specific firearm fired a projectile. It is important to note that tool mark examination is subjective. It is dependent on the opinion of the examiner and it is possible that two examiners could come to different conclusions about the same tool marks they are examining. You should now be able to describe the different types of tool marks, describe how to undertake a tool mark examination, understand the difference between class and individual characteristics.